Hey, what's going on guys? Arex here, and today I want to talk about the Breath of the Wild sequel. I've been wanting to make this video for the past two weeks, ever since it was announced at E3, but it's just been so busy, I've had to keep pushing it out. But today we are talking about it because you guys should know by now, I'm a huge Zelda fan. Zelda is, above all else, my number one favorite series, and Breath of the Wild is, without question, one of my all-time favorite Zelda games. It is literally second to Ocarina, which is my number one. So it's safe to say, when they announced the sequel, I was incredibly excited. That in itself basically just made this one of the best E3s for me because, yes, I'm a little bit biased, but Zelda, whew, I'm ready. So today, I want to talk about the things that I most hope to see in the sequel, my wish list for things that I want them to improve, because while Breath of the Wild was an amazing game, there were also definitely some things they could have done better. So, with that being said, here are five things I hope we see in Breath of the Wild 2. If you guys do enjoy this, then like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if there's anything else you guys would like to see. And of course, if you have any crazy theories, I also want to hear those too. Anyway, starting off with number one, traditional temples. Now, don't get me wrong, the Divine Beasts were cool in Breath of the Wild, but they weren't really what I expected from traditional temples in Zelda. In fact, I feel like I got more of a temple vibe out of the shrines than I did out of the Divine Beasts. One of the things I've always enjoyed so much about Zelda games, and I've played pretty much all of them, is that when you go into the temples, they are all very thematically different. They are all very unique in their own way. Invariably, they require some particular item to get through, but there's always a very distinct theme for them. And every single time you go to a different one, it's just completely and utterly different to the last. And while layout-wise, the Divine Beasts were unique in their own, they were still thematically quite similar. So you didn't really get that ancient temple vibe, that huge explorable area where you go through, you fight puzzles, you have the areas where you have to defeat certain enemies before you can progress, and of course it all culminating in a huge epic boss. Now there was of course that one super sneaky segment during the Breath of the Wild sequel teaser where they, for like literally a split second, panned into what could be the entrance to a temple. Now, yes, of course, that could just be the entrance to wherever this skeletal being is being held, which, by the way, is almost certainly Ganondorf, thanks to the Gerudo symbolism on the chains and the earrings. But while, yes, it could just be where he's being stored, I kind of just hope that sort of like a little nod to Zelda fans being like, yo, by the way, if you slow this down, that's a, that's a temple. Because if we could explore a huge open world like we did in Breath of the Wild before, but then hidden away in mountains, buried beneath the snow, hidden at the bottom of lakes and oceans, we can actually find these temples. I feel like that, that would just make for an incredible experience. And of course, while on the topic of temples, I do want to speak about number two as well, and that is just the return of more exciting bosses. Again, very much like I was saying about the temples, the Divine Beasts, but the actual bosses we fought at the end, again, while they were different in their own way, they behaved differently, they played differently, they also aesthetically had that similar theme to them. What I like about the different temples, what I like about everything else in the previous Zelda games is that every boss, much like their temples, is also very unique in their own way. They look different, they play differently. Everything about them is so different to the last. And I want that to come back. I really want that unique feeling. I don't feel like everything needs to, you know, match this theme. I don't feel like everything needs to kind of feel like it belongs to this same group. I want everything just to be so drastically different. So if we could have some huge epic bosses, I mean, imagine, right? Imagine like the dragons that flew around the sky in Breath of the Wild. Imagine if that was actually a boss. I mean, okay, I know we've kind of seen that before in Ocarina of Time when we speak about Volvagia, but regardless, if that was in Breath of the Wild, again, factoring all the kind of stuff you can do, all the crazy climbing you can do, all the physics, everything like that, they would make for some epic boss battles. I want more of them as well. I don't just want four divine beasts. I want kind of a, you know, more traditional like six, eight, maybe even 10. I know I'm asking for something crazy, but hey, this is being built in what seems to be the same engine in the same high rule. So if they're using that as a base, maybe they can focus some of their efforts on creating crazy amounts of new temples with loads of crazy new bosses for some equally epic adventures. Of course, on top of that, the other thing that I want also kind of ties into temples, but that is more equipment variety. Now, I completely understand the logic behind Breath of the Wild Sheikah Slate. I thought it was a really cool system in that you get quite a lot of things early on, and it's then down to you to work out how to solve puzzles. And I think that aspect is actually really cool. I actually had a lot of enjoyment out of that, and I think the natural puzzle-solving element in Breath of the Wild basically bred a ton of unique and inventive ways to solve puzzles. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the crazy speed runs through shrines where people are solving things in ways that you're probably not supposed to. And that's cool. However, I do still, to a degree, miss some of the more traditional aspects where, you know, you go into the forest temple, you get the bow, and then as a result of having the bow, you can then complete it. Now, that being said, there's kind of like a fine line that I want to see balanced here, because I do like the aspect in Breath of the Wild where you could basically do the game in whatever order you wanted. So much like you find in Metroidvania-style games, it'd be cool if 
in temple design, in kind of dungeon design, they make it so that there's kind of a golden line, you know, a typical way to complete the temple, but then if you do have certain items, you can then return and get more out of it. That I feel like would be the best balance because then it incentivizes people to return to temples. Then we get much greater replay value because there may well be a situation where say you go into, let's call it the forest temple and you complete it, but you then see an area and you're like, oh, if only I had the hook shot, I'll come back here later. And then, you know, fast forward another 10, 15 hours in game, you finally get it, you go back, then you revisit that area. That would be cool. That would basically then give us plenty of reasons to actually go around and revisit temples on multiple different occasions. However, I do still like the idea of getting items from temples. And I feel like that could work because if you then look at the teaser trailer, there are some speculations going around that it may well be when you see that green energy taking over Link's hand. There was some concept art a while back for Breath of the Wild where there was actually a concept drawing of Link that had a missing arm and it was then replaced with this Bionic Sheikah arm. Now, if that green energy were to instead manifest as, say, like an energy arm, and you could then turn that into, like, you know, a hammer, turn it into a hook shot, turn it into a bow, that in itself would be very cool. It would look really awesome, but it would also still work and link into the temple idea. You know, you could go to a temple, you could then collect, say, some of the souls or some of the green energy, and that could then unlock a new ability, and suddenly, wham, your arm can turn into a hammer, your arm can turn into a bomb, your arm can turn into everything you need to, so it can still have that kind of logic of the Sheikah Slate from before, only now it's manifested in your arm. But... I would still like it if you didn't necessarily get everything up front because there is still some magic in exploring a temple, opening something up, and then getting that item that is so unique to that area. So something like that, making a return, not entirely sure how they'll do it, but that's something I want to see. And on top of that, speaking of items, this one has to have a point all itself. Number four is please bring back the hookshot. The hookshot for the longest time has been my favorite item in any Zelda game. Anytime there is a hookshot or something of that nature, even the rope in Wind Waker, anything like that, I've just always loved it as someone that loves exploring, someone that loves platforming, climbing, just anything like that. Having the hookshot, some of my fondest memories of Ocarina of Time were of course using the hookshot to get around, getting up into the windmill in Kakariko Village and flying down with a chicken, things like that. And when you factor in just how much you can explore in Breath of the Wild, now I know you can climb most things, I know you've of course got the uh, glider so you can of course fly around and you've got plenty of physics so you can kind of launch yourself into the sky, but imagine if you could then climb a cliff, jump onto your glider and then drop down and hookshot onto something and then carry on going. Hookshots would just be so awesome. Pair that with, of course, the physics engine built into Breath of the Wild. And uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can guess there could be some really, really clever things we could do with that. So please bring back the hookshots. And then finally, the number five, this one is something that, you know, more of a personal thing, but I really do hope they bring back some more iconic music. Now, there were some great tracks in Breath of the Wild. There were some really awesome tracks that I do still enjoy listening to. But when I think about other Zelda games, when I think about specifically Ocarina of Time, Gerudo Valley, or Wind Waker, Dragon Roost Island, in some of the other Zelda games, there are some songs that have always stuck with me that I've just always instantly remembered. But upon completing Breath of the Wild, and, you know, maybe this was, of course, a design choice. Maybe it was because of the nature of the story. Maybe it was supposed to be a little bit more serene. But there weren't too many tracks that actually jumped out to me. There weren't too many that when I finished the game, I was like, yo, Oh, that area was amazing. Meanwhile, going back to Ocarina of Time, I would regularly just go to Gerudo Valley just so that I could listen to the music. Same thing for Dragon Roost Island and Wind Waker. So I would like to see some really iconic music. And when you factor in that this game supposedly is taking a slightly darker turn, they're saying that while it's not in any way related to Majora's Mask, they are saying that what may well be in the sequel may be darker than Majora's Mask, then uh, there could be some really, really cool, awesome, eerie music that I could see them working on. But anyway, that's it for the time being. Those are a few things that I would love to see in the sequel. Honestly, I am so incredibly excited for this one. I cannot wait to hear more. I cannot wait to see more. I really do hope that we actually get this much sooner than we might think. I know it sounds crazy, but I could honestly see us having this potentially playable like towards the end of next year because if they're building this in a pre-existing engine and they've been working on this for quite a few years, then it might not actually be as far away as we might think. Either way, whatever it is, I cannot wait. Of course, be sure to keep it locked because as and when we do find out more, I'll be keeping you guys bang up to date. And if there's anything else you guys want to know or you want to talk about or you want me to cover videos on, then by all means, let me know in the comments down below. But for the time being, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also don't forget, you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.